I have always dreamed of a place where children could come and play safely while parents go about the gardens and take in the beauty of the scenery. My name is Mary Long. Most people know me as Mary Elich Long, first woman to be the keeper of a zoo. This is the tragic story of how I lost my husband, John Elich. I met John Enwell in 1872. At the time, I was living in San Francisco, California. I was 16 then, but I was old enough to know what love is. He was wonderful with dark girly hair and the most amazing blue eyes. He had swept me off my feet. I was head over heels. My father didn't care for him. He thought I was too young, and John was too old for me. But I followed my heart and ran away with John, all the way to San Jose, California, and that's where we wed. After eight years of being married to John, we finally decided to move to the state bowl of promise and adventure, Colorado. We moved to Durango, Colorado, a beautiful little town indeed. In Durango, we decided to open a small cafe. After a while, we then moved to Denver and opened up a restaurant, which turned out to be a favorite of both locals and visitors. When we first moved to Denver, we had to live in a small, complex home. About three years after the restaurant opened, we moved into a large 16-acre farmhouse. There we had beautiful gardens in which we grew flowers and planned to grow our own vegetables and fruit for the restaurant. After a while, we wondered if we could open the gardens to the public. Even greater than that, a circus owner had given us baby and adult animals to take care of. And I'm not talking about dogs and cats. I am talking about bears, lions, cu lion cubs, and monkeys. Then sold the restaurant to a wealthy man. Then at our farm, we made playgrounds and goat rides for the children, benches in the gardens for the parents, large environment pens for the animals, and a large log entrance in the front. 1890, the gates opened and thousands of people came from near and far. Our zoo and botanic gardens was a success. It was named Elitch's Zoological Gardens. After the first season of Great Fortune, all was good, and John finally had enough money to take his acting group on a tour in California that winter. I was sad he wanted to do this, for I did not want him to leave, but I let him follow his heart, as did I. On his tour, however, John had caught a serious lung infection, pneumonia. This was making it difficult for him to breathe, and the illness grew quickly worse. As soon as I had heard the news, I rushed to California to be by his side. He was extremely ill, and I knew in my heart he wouldn't make it. I stayed in the hospital right by his bedside for three weeks. Then on March 10, 1891, a year after Elitch's zoological gardens had opened, John Elitch had died. I didn't know what to do. My heart was broken in half. The love of my life was just suddenly gone. When I returned to Denver, I cried and wept. What I do now? John had always made the decisions. I was just the designer and caretaker for the animals. I felt lost without him. I bawled in my sorrow, not thinking for the good of the zoo. I felt distraught and lonely, and as much as I cried and wept, I never felt any better. As the weeks passed by, I then realized this isn't what John would want me to do. He would want me to get right back out there and continue on my dreams. After this realization, I sprung back up on my feet and got right to work. I would make this zoo the best zoo ever. I would make it a place where children would beg their parents to go, and so that's exactly what I did. Over the years, I added new animals and attractions. This is including the largest lion in captivity, ostriches, and kangaroos. I also added a carousel, a roller coaster, and even a theater. Years were good, and I eventually got remarried, but my pride and joy was my park, which I still cherish the very memory of it in my heart, forever and always.